Hello everyone and welcome to the third part of the Jet Dragon series. Today he is going to be complete. So it is just going to be amazing seeing it all come together finally. So let us start off by shifting his head a bit or tilting it and moving it a bit downwards. And of course, if you like the video and the content I make, feel free to share, subscribe, like. It helps me a lot and it helps me make more videos like this for you. So once again, I want to position this head a bit better. And of course, one thing that is also important is the naming. So let us rename some of the parts. For example, this will be called belly. And now this is the tail ring thing. Let's call it tail ring. This is like the moon crescent, so moon tail. These are the feet. And this I'll leave for later. So this is the hand rig. Later we will separate the hands and the arms. So this is why I'm not naming it now. This is the moon tail ring. Of course this is named. I also need to rename this part here. Jetwing rings. Of course I can even move them a bit backwards. So they are lined up like this and those toruses here they're all part of the leg so let me just make a separate folder or collection and i will call it leg and then when i select those things i can press m and move it into the collection and here we have it so now the next thing i want to do is select the arm and separate the arm from the hand like this I can also rename it. Rings like this. And when it comes to this part, you can see we have shoulders and the arm part. And we want to merge those together. So let me go to this code mode. But first we want to make sure we apply all transforms. And also, let me just bring this. We want to apply all the modifiers to so subdivision and mirror. Of course, we can apply the transforms once again, so we do not have any issues. And in the scope mode, we can begin by remeshing on a lower resolution. And here we have it. Of course, we want to make sure we keep on count on vertices. More vertices, the more like it will be. And we want to make sure the mirror is on. So now I will grab the smooth brush, lower the strength. And start smoothing the transition between the shoulder and the hand. We can look at it from the front view. He is not a bodybuilder, so he will not have like big shoulders. We can also make the arms a bit less blocky. You can see now I'm smoothing these rough edges. And this is why I just love sculpting. Any shape you do, you can just make it a whole much finer with the little touches and details and smoothing. It just begins to look more organic. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is apply the modifiers. But first, in order to fix this thing here, we can press the merge. And you can see it looks so much better. And now, we we'll actually want to apply the modifiers on the body because we will merge it with the hands and also of course with the head so let me just apply those and then ctrl j both of them does not matter which one you selected first as long as they all have applied modifiers again i can remesh on a lower resolution and you can see now i have 170,000 vertices I can even bring it a bit lower, like this. What I'm looking for is that this connection between the shoulders and the body is smooth. It's, I do not want it to be like taking out too much. I think you'll know what I mean. For example, this looks much better because I can now smooth this out. Without having it like too mashed up. You know what I mean? Of course, when it comes to the shoulder, I will make the transition a whole lot smoother. 
as we can see on the picture. Look at it a bit from the further, it looks nice. Of course, I can fix the shape with the grab brush. And once again, we can also make sure we smooth the rest of the body. So you can either do it like this. Or if you want, you can make the strength a bit bigger. You do not have to go do the same strokes that many times but i just like to have control when it comes to finer details this part also but i still don't want to lose the of the tail also we can go around and smooth the overall body And arms a bit more. The next thing we'd want to do is connect the head with the body. As you can see, it does not have modifiers, so we are good to do it. Let me just first move it a bit like this. Because this is final, we want to determine the correct angle. Because when we merge those two parts, there is no going back. So here it is. It's blue. It's amazing. And now again, we'll remesh it. Make sure so you can see the vertex count change. It's remeshed. And now the smoothing part begins. It is basically like ironing clothes. You want it to look nice and shiny. Look at it from the side. Okay. Of course, I can even smooth the parts of the head. Now we can use the crease brush to actually define it a bit better so we can change the follow to constant make sure this is a negative to draw like a sharp mechanical line but of course you want to make sure you're doing it precisely like this and then we want to also make it go around so underneath it like here And once again, trust the process. This may not seem like a big thing we are doing now, but it's going to make so much difference. Sometimes it's the smallest details that make the most difference. As you can see, it looks so much sharper now. But of course, we need to also smooth the regions here. Those are just the side effect of the crease brush. And then you can see the difference. Of course, we can change it back to smooth. And now we are going to do the reverse crease. So we are going to just make sharper edges, for example, here. We can even make the brush a bit bigger. Like this, so it connects nicely. We want to have a nice flow of geometry. And the same goes for the other side. And 
and this part here we can feel free to use the smooth brush to make it more even Look at it from different directions, different angles. So I just battling the lighting. So you can see the shadows, the indents, the outdents. Outdents. It actually almost sounds like a word. Make sure I fix the angle. Now I see that this is a bit more too sharp. So I can do something like this. And while looking at it from the side, I'm actually just going to fix it a bit more. And then of course I can even smooth it. the inflate brush i'm just going to add some mass that we lose by smoothing the mesh so just make some parts inflated and then smooth lightly you do not want to overdo the smoothing process because it also while it smooths it also flattens the mesh for example here we need some mass Now I'm just smoothing to make it a bit more flatter. Now I'm just making sure I like the mouth. Okay. Now we can continue with the creasing. For example, let us crease the parts of the mouth. And the crease brush is, as you can see, pretty nice for making some lines that are a bit, bit wonky, a bit straighter. And it just highlights the shape overall. Okay, let me just also make sure I smooth the inner part. They're not going to be as visible, but we can still make them look pretty. As I say, beauty is in the inside. Just want to make sure that this is going at least straight. And now for the lower mouth. You can also use the crease. And I can extend the line to go a bit more backwards. That way we can make the mouth look a bit deeper. Of course, smooth it a bit more. And once again, I'm looking for the lines to be pretty nice. So the silhouette needs to be nice. And the overall shape needs to appear like very dynamic, but at the same time precise. It's just exactly what I'm doing. So I'm just making sure the curve of the mouth, the over mouth, looks nice. As we can see on the reference here, it is accurate. I'm just doing these minor tweaks. And it's already looking so much better. We spent like a few minutes of this. And now what I'm going to do is make a crease. 
like this we did a similar one before and we're going to do it again just to have this like a separation of different planes for example this part here i can smooth out a bit more and i'm going to have a nice plane change that will add to the overall structure now you can see the shape we have is pretty amazing so the next part we are going to do are those upper things i don't know how to call them it's like the wings of a jet plane basically and they hold like those sparkly things it probably has the name but i like to call them sparkly things so i want to make sure i add the mirror and enable clipping it's, it is much easier to make it mirror than to mirror both sides manually. What I'm going to do is select those two parts and drag them down so we actually have a similar shape. We can bring this forward. And you can see, even though this part seems pretty complicated, it's actually pretty easy to achieve. You just need to know how to model and to look at it from different perspectives can see now i'm just trying to make it look good from the side view and once i get it okay with the proportion and the positioning i can move on to the front view and then balance and change between those two so i can add another look at here and I actually want to extend it a bit like this. Of course, make it go a bit outward. Let me check the reference. We need to bring this a lot more outwards. Now let us add the other modifier, such as the subdivision surface. Make sure it is behind the mirror modifier and increase the subdivision. Which means now it looks much closer to the one that we want to achieve. Let me just position it. But of course we'll also need to add some more loop cuts to make the shape a bit more sharper at some time. Of course, now I'm just trying to get the positioning right. For example, here we can add a loop cut. And here. And you can see now we have those edges that we were talking about. But also keep in mind the more edges we have, the more difficult it is to position something. Now I look at it from the side view once again. And 
is actually pretty accurate. And I do not want this little part to be sticking like this. But first, let me make sure I got the shape right. I can just press GG two times to just move it like this. I want to bring this a bit more inwards. I think it was better without it. And because we have a lot of edges, you can see the geometry easily warps. So to fix this, we can just get rid of those loop cuts. And then add a new one and it should be perfectly in line like this Now I'm just making sure it is lined up to this picture. For example, I want it to go backwards till the middle part of the leg as it is. And I want it to be actually also nice from the front view. We can also add another modifier, the solidify modifier, which will make it look not like a piece of paper. You can see here, I can just make it to go into negative or the offset to zero it's up to you you can even move the solidify modifier above but i think it's better for us to leave it here so the mirror subdivision and then the solidify modifier and if we were to shade smooth it it looks something like this Now we can actually add the course. Much better. Now I'm looking for the reference which has these nice diamonds so I can see their size and their shape. But first let me also angle this a bit more. So now what I'm going to do is add a cube, which is going to be our first diamond. So in edit mode, for example, I can grab these four vertices and merge them at the center. Then I'm going to grab these four. And what I'm going to do is actually extrude them downwards. 
and then scale them down once again. This part I can also, when I bring down, I can merge at the center. Let me just look at another reference. Yeah, this one gives us a pretty nice look at it. So this part here, one part needs to be a bit more flatter. As you can see, we cannot do it while we scale. So what I can do is select two vertices and just scale them. They're going to scale towards the 3D cursor and the origin, which makes it much easier. Then this part, I just press GG and brought it up. And now we have a pretty nice looking diamond. So I can just position the cursor here and then select it to cursor. So I do not have to move it like 10,000 times. Now it's just about finding the correct rotation. And of course, if you want, you can try different orientations, which will give you different rotating options. And well, if it does not work the way you want it, feel free to just look at it from different directions and then just rotate it freely. Now let me just see a reference on which I can see the positioning of them. And of course, I can disable the 3D cursor in the viewport always because I do not need to see it now. But this, let me just rotate it a bit more upward. Put it back to global. Of course, feel free, take your time, position it nicely. Let me just put it a bit more like this. Here, I'm just going to duplicate another one and then angle it as well. I will join those two together and now what I can do is again use the mirror modifier and make sure I just select the mirror to the thingy we did here. Blue thingy. I have no idea how to call this. The jet thingy. Everything is jet on the jet dragon. So this is a pretty nice picture when it comes to the position of them. For example, we can scale them up a bit, like this. This one I can even make a bit smaller, just so it looks nicer. And we can use this one from the front view to see the correct rotation. Then called this one, we can bring a bit more upwards. This one as well. Let me just select it with L. Okay. I can rotate it like this. By looking at the silhouette of the ones on the reference, I can determine if they are correctly rotated on my dragon. You can see we see it more like this. And this also needs to be a bit more rotated. And you can see we see a bit less of it. So 
Uh, let me also apply the transforms on the leg. Once again, we can use these ones and duplicate them. And those are actually going to be the shiny thingies. Now they look a bit big, but we can make them much flatter. And of course, we can just make sure they're also a bit thinner. So first, what I can do is make them smaller, position them a bit more. And I can actually make sure I scale them down make this a bit longer I can try different rotations for a more accurate result but if it just doesn't work we can do it manually like this now I'll just try to angle them at least roughly And then let us try to position them so their tips are pointing towards the diamond. And they are below it so it's like they're coming out of those diamonds. Like a hollow projection of some sort. But they do just look amazing. I can make those ones smaller. And it's not actually like that on the reference, but I like it much better that way. And here you can see that they are lower, so this reference confirms our suspicions. And it is looking pretty nicely. Of course, it's pretty colorless, but do not worry. First, I want to separate the diamonds from the shiny things. And then I can make sure I shade smooth the things. But first, I want to do is... Hmm, this. This is much better when I shade flat it, actually. And I also want to fix this so it does not intersect, so I can just add a look at here. And I think I can get rid of these two. Yeah, I need to get rid of them. Then I'll add another look at. And now it looks like it needs to. Okay, just make sure you save it. And now what we are going to do is I want to actually bring back the 3D cursor. And you can just move it around like this. Or if you select the option there, you can move it by just clicking. And then make sure you back again, you select the select box. And what I want to do now is I will add a plane. So what we're going to do is make the eyeballs or the eyes. Let me just first at least rotate it in the correct direction. Of course, head is on the way, so with the numpad, I can just make sure I select only that. And you can see when I make it a triangle, it does not work. So what I'm going to do is just scale this down. I'll tell you two vertices at the bottom. I'm going to make sure I look at here, make it a bit wider. So now I'm just getting the shape in general. course I can use the subdivision surface like four and once again I can find different references for example this one represents the eye nicely so as you can see we need to angle it a bit downwards Make sure you're just doing this moving in the side view. 
so you do not get some unnecessary movement in other directions. So now I'm just tweaking the shape. I can move this a bit downwards. So just GG to move it like that. Okay, let me just also tweak this. Now, well, his eye is a bit too big, so let me try to angle it so it is nice on his head, like this. And of course, we need to bring it much more forward. And determine like the rough position where it is going to be. I can GG this once again. This part here I'm just scaling a bit. So the small touches. Nothing to major. And once we are happy with the overall shape. We'll begin doing the like the eyeball and the iris and of course we can also do the shine why not so first i will begin with a subdivided plane and this is just going to be like a template to where i'm going to place the circle so when it comes to viewport display i can display it in front just in case, so we do not have it intersecting. I will separate the material and then I will try to position it. Of course, I'm going to make it much bigger. And what I can also do is make sure I snap it. So it is located in the same direction and rotation as this one. And then I can bring it forward. Of course, do not worry about the warp, since this is just like a permanent thingy. Just going to scale it up. And the point is, we want it to go outside of the eye zone, because the eyeball does the same. You do not see the whole eyeball, you only see the part of it, because the rest is covered by the eyelid. Now, when it's positioned, we want to add a circle. And now, I'm just going to scale it down and position it where this thing is. Then, I want to rotate it roughly. Of course, now I can delay the previous part and we are only left with the field circle. Which is actually going to represent our eyeball. Once again, we can duplicate it and make this smaller part, which is going to be the iris. And then, of course, we can duplicate it again. This will be the shine on the iris. And we can duplicate it once again for the little shine at the corner of the empty of the cornelia of course when you look at it from this side you can position it a bit more 
and we can either make those as like solidify objects give them depth but i'm just going to leave them like this since this is only for presentation purposes now i can just separate all those by loose parts so we're going to have them as different and it is already looking kind of like an eye now what i'm going to do is delay the parts that are outside of the eye zone so for example this vertex and also this vertex and don't worry about this parts we can always manually bring them a bit towards the eye here i'm also going to delay the rest of them and then i can just gg this backwards and also gg this i just love saying gg it's addicting now i also want to make sure i position it and do not worry about the vertices since we are looking at the face we want it to touch the outer parts of the eye so i can just we can see bring it like this and it is looking pretty interesting Of course, I can remove the 3D cursor or move it there so we can see how it looks like. And now let us also select all the eye parts and merge them together. When it comes to moving, we want to make sure that the origin is set to geometry. And now we can scale it and move it correctly. Of course, we need to also position the fin to better suit the reference. In edit mode, I can space them out a bit more. I can also move this. And what I'm going to do next is we're going to do the top of the head of the dragon. So once again, I will add a plane, subdivide it, make sure the mirror is enabled. And also we will add a shrink wrap so we can just stick it on the head. And then I want to make sure the shrink wrap is on above surface. And I want to select the correct mesh. And then the order is mirror subdivide shrink wrap. That way it's going to look nice. And of course make sure the snapping on face is enabled. You can also view power display and show it in front. And you can see this is looking pretty nice. This part we can extrude. And extrude once again. And now we can just select those and extrude them upwards and give him a mohawk. Well, too bad we won't do that. But I think the mohawk would actually suit him pretty nice. So like he's uh, some kind of a cyberpunky character. I just need to make sure this is rounded. And if it keeps doing this, it's just like a visual thing. So what I can do is you can see, I can pull the vertex above his head. 
and it's going to be fine make sure you merge by distance so you know you do not have any extra vertices that you do not need this part needs to be like this you want a nice curve angle that goes inward and i can also bring this a bit backwards We can add more look at so he does not look like a golf ball. Now he looks like a more subdivided golf ball. Now he looks a bit more normal. I can apply the mirror. Okay. Because the first thing I want to make sure is that this is smoothed out. And I can make sure I enable symmetry. So with this slider X, I'm holding shift and smoothing out the geometry. And you can see I'm avoiding the center part because it can get clumped up. And now that I have applied all the modifiers, another thing we can do is like make the solidify modifier like this. So now I wanted to add the subdivision modifier. And I'm going to subdivide it a few more times. And now we get the same smoothing effect. But we can also use this solidify to get the thickness without the weird shading. And that's why it looks so much better. Now I also want to fix the eye. So now I decreased the thickness and brought it a bit up. And in the scope mode, make sure the mirror is enabled. I can tweak some of the geometry. And the thing is, I could have, have done it in the edit mode if I haven't applied the subdivision modifier before. This way, I have too much geometry to just tweak in the edit mode, so it is much easier to be done with a grab brush in the sculpt mode. Now let us add the material. Position the eye a bit more. I want to also add the mirror modifier for the eye. Make sure we are mirroring of the body. In this part here, I can actually extrude a bit further away since it goes over the eye. I can bring the eye a bit backwards. Fix this part here. Now 
I also want to make sure this is positioned. I should have merged it before, but... Don't worry, we haven't moved it a lot, so now it is looking nice. Uh, first, we want to make sure the, the white belly part goes all the way to his lower mouth part. I want to make sure that the existing white parts are snapped to his body, so I can just make sure this is in front. Let us first extrude this part and the other part that is going to go all the way here. Now I'm just snapping it. And for this part we can add another loop cut. This part we are going to extrude. And make sure we look at it from the all of the sides. So it is not snapped in somewhere unnecessary. Bring this here. Of course we are going to need another loop cut. this our position like this Just now making sure it looks good on all sides. Here I want to actually raise that. So we want to have sort of a curve. Of course we have some other vertices that are in the mesh. So we want to make sure we just press G and re-snap them. It is already looking so much better. This part I can actually extrude. And bring it upwards like this. You can add another loop cut. Make sure this one is also snapped. What I'm going to do is extrude those. I want to make the part that is, goes a bit into the mouth. And you can see if I extend it too much, it is still not going to cover the whole mouth. So let us delay the vertices. And try to position them a bit better. I'm going to select this edge here and now that I have duplicated I'm carefully going to place it like this since I want it to snap correctly and not get twisted by any means for example this one got twisted so I want to try to bring it as close to the original position as possible I can even disable in front to see much better what I'm doing and if those vertices are actually snapping on the inner mouth that we want it to be.
bring those a bit backwards and this is already looking much better than it did before now i'm just trying to make sure the mouth part is not covered by the mesh as you can see i brought the whole thing downward and i can try to position some individual parts a bit more for example this part here i can use alt s to scale it up if needed in this case i can try to position it without it Or like this a bit here so i will again use alt s to scale it and now i'm trying to find the middle ground because when it comes to minor tweaks like this here we can fix that pretty easily so without snapping i'm just going to bring those vertices a bit more outside this we want to cover it up here i can add another loop cut this for i will select and then i can actually bring it a bit forward and it already looks so much better. And once again, we can also roughly position those like this. Just looking at it from different directions. And as you can see, this is why the mirror needs to go first. So we do not have any sort of weird happenings because the modifier order affects the order in which modifiers are taken. So first you want to mirror it and then that which is mirrored is then subdivided and etc. And now what I'm going to do, um, wrong, wrong, we want to use the small brush. And what I'm going to do is make sure the under the brush, I enable front braces only. And now I can smooth it without destroying everything. Just kidding, but this makes it much easier and it actually helps you not to destroy the placement of the topology. Like this. What I can also do is make sure I select everything in edit mode. And I can actually use the option to smooth vertices. It's going to help a lot. It's going to smooth the minor details that we actually don't see with the naked eye. Or at least we are not currently looking for. Of course with the grab brush we can fix those smaller things. And we have his underbelly. I want to make sure it is positioned nicely. For example, again with the grab brush, we can do some minor tweaks. And then smooth it out. And if it is not working as much with the grab brush, you can try by 
dragging from different directions so let me just try that or by using the elastic deform brush since we want this to be mostly intersecting so this will not make any problems like this with this out and it's looking much much better it's so cool looking let me just fix the eyes a bit more I can bring this upwards okay now i also want to color these diamonds so they are the same reddish material that we already have which is nice let me find the reference for the eyes and eyes are also reddish i mean of course they have the lighting so they appear more orange but we are going to make them reddish as well but first let us also make the glow material so first of all we want to get rid of the principal bsdf so we want to add the emission which is going to give the overall lighting effect then we want to give the power ramp which we are going to determine the power which is going to be like a pinkish one layer weight will add the interesting effect you're going to see it later mix because now we want to actually grab the it's, yes it's matte so we want to mix matte when this matte here and we also want a friend so, so now i want to make sure the animation is into surface so we want to plug this in of course we are going to use the color from the color ramp and the facing from the layer weight you can see it already has the gradient mix is going to go into strength and we are going to mix the add value which will later make multiply and the frenzel into this so i want to make sure this is into multiply add and then i want to actually first of all get the colors right so we do not want it white or black i can for example put this to like 0.5 okay and now let us try and get like a purplish color and because it is glowy we can just make sure it is also very saturated so do not worry we can even put this saturation we just up to this and now this part is going to be more reddish you're going to see so we can just make sure this is value to one and then make it reddish and on these planes now because they are shaded flat i can see the pores and if we want to see the result we need to actually shade smooth it. let me first enable also some settings for example make it lighter maybe 0 0.6 also a bit lighter and when i shade smooth we get something like this and it looks pretty cool once again we can look at the factor but in this case it does not do much so we can leave it as it is and let us make sure this is on 0 0.3 now we have the light glow and our dragon is one step to being complete so the next on the repertoire are the eyes And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into edit mode with them and I'm going to add multiple materials. So one is going to be the red. I'm going to make a new white one. Make sure I will use the notes like this. So I want to make sure it is white. I can select those parts that are going to be white. It's almost the whole eye. Hit L. And then I'm going to just assign it. So now this is reading the white material. And now we need again the black material which is going to be the iris so once again i'll press l select it and assign the black material and look he is looking so much cuter now 
of course when it comes to this blue cover i'm going to rename it body so i know this is for the body makes sense doesn't it and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a cover attribute because we need to paint the inside of the mouth so we're going to also need a color which will just bring the bluish color that we have and we are going to mix the bluish color and the inside part of the mouth which we are going to paint into one single color which will go into the base color slot and now we'll have the combination that we need if it doesn't make much sense you're going to see it in action so i'm just going to plug this in this in of course here i'm going to make sure this is the blue color but as you can see if i pick it from somewhere it takes into account the lighting and it's not very precise so what i can do is go here and make sure this is flat and now we can see the correct value of the color and it's pretty nice for picking the color from the pipette. As you can see now we don't have a color attribute because that is why we need to make one. So now we make one by going to the... Let me just save real quick. We're going to the vertex pane. And when we enter vertex pane up here you can see we have the color code attribute and now what we're going to do is we're going to paint on the layer called attributes and we're going to paint the inside of the mouth as i told before I want to make sure it is precise because it is going to be visible. And you can see when we go to the object mode, we still see the blue dragon here. In the color attribute, we select the attribute. I want to make sure the multiply is plugged into blaze color. By making sure we use the nose here. Now we can see the both colors and this is what I mean by mixing them up. But of course now, because we are not using the same color anymore, we need to make another material for the lighter legs. This one is a bit too dark, so what I'm going to do is add another material. We're going to again use notes and then we can change this into the flat shading once again and with the pipette i'll be able to grab the body color but we want to make sure we assign it into edit mode and now you can see this is the same color but now that i'm looking at the reference in this lighting i think he is a bit too pale so what we can do is change his color using the color ramp. I just copied the value. And I'm going to paste it here. And you can see this is what I wanted to show you. So if the values are not matching. It is because here we're using the color ramp. Which also has the secondary color. We just tweak the roughness first. So now what I can do is select this color. And I can just press the minus. And now we have only one color here. Which means I can also tweak this. To be a little less saturated. And then copy again the value. And paste it here.
and now we can see it looks nice of course i also want to make sure the roughness is the same on all parts so if i select for example this part here we can see roughness is on one here it is on 0 0.4 also let us also switch this to 0 0.4 And make sure we do not have specular on this red one. Just make sure I'll paint the mouth a bit more. So these are just the little tweaks. And of course when it comes to tweaking part, you can literally spend hours on it. And feel free to. I mean this is your dragon, your project. Put so much effort and time into it. So you can be proud of your achievement. And of course, if you want to hone your skills, feel free to check out my course in which we actually make a full 3D game-ready character using Blender. And it is just pretty amazing to either get started or hone your skill. Links for it are in the description. And now, let me just make sure this is in the front. And you can see there are some like weird artifacts when we zoom out and that can be fixed actually pretty easily but okay now i've noticed this okay let me smooth it okay now he is looking much better i also need to bring this you can see those artifacts there this is just the viewer display. It's not even an issue. It's just a mechanic. And we can easily choose that and fix that by changing the clip start, for example, to 0.1. And now you can see it is looking fine. Okay, let me just move this so we can see it in its full glory. The finished Jet Dragon. I want to thank you all for watching and... I hope you learned something new, you had fun, and of course, see you in the next videos. Bye bye!